to ask any questions please put your name and organization we will try and finish the session within the scheduled time but if you want to carry on the conversation then you can go to the coffee shop we're going to be on table two so if you want to come and chat to us about anything um then you're welcome to you're also welcome to contact us via nasfa social media we're always checking that and we'd really really love to hear from you after the session so like Callum said, I'm Megan, I'm an ex Carnival RAG director and I'm currently a PGC student. I'm also on the NASFA committee because when I graduated not a year ago, I decided I can't leave the world of student fundraising yet. So here I am. Hi, I'm Laura. Um, I was on Kent RAG's committee for three years and a active member for four years. And now I'm a, I'm a sabbatical officer, vice president, post president for the Kent Union. And like Megan Callum, I'm also on the NASFA committee. So what are we going to discuss with you today? So we'll be looking at five main things with you. So the first would be the typical RAG calendar, um, how to deliver events online. Third would be term three in the future, post COVID, I know. Fourth is a perfect world. And finally, what to consider when planning an event. So we just want to know what comes to mind when you think about an event. So if you have your phone on you or your laptop, if you just go to menti.com and enter in the code 788745, and we just want to see, you'll be able to see the results as they come up here. Um, but yeah, we just want to know what comes to mind when you think of an event. We'll also pop some. We um, worked really hard and tried to get this to work. So if there's technical <laughs> difficulties, please, um, we will share it after. Fun, lovely, boozy, interesting. Boozy can come under a lot of different things because obviously mm. some people think of some events that include alcohol, events that don't include alcohol, and that's something you should really, really consider when planning your event in RAG. Wow, loads of, wow. RAG events, making money, engagement, jailbreak, love jailbreak, a lot of work, I love a jailbreak. Having fun, inclusive. Diverse. Oh, it's all moving all a bit fast now. Community, lovely, budgeting. Lots of work. <laughs> we it is that. a lot of work, but that's what we're here for, isn't it? it was a fight night. Interesting. You can really see the different types of rides and the different types of events coming through as well. And if you're not 100% sure how a menti works, if the words are bigger, it means that more people have said them. Getting to know people, I think that's going to be especially important moving into what university would be like online teaching. So especially first years, I think that's going to be a huge one. How are you going to engage first years when maybe they're being taught online? These are really fantastic, like tea as someone's put. Yeah, they can be tea as I promise, they can be. <laughs> I know that, yeah. They've got so small for me now. Wow, there's loads, wow. Thank you for all engaging with this. I think it's really interesting, like we've said, that Meg and I come from medium to larger rags. So some of the words we would have chosen would be different. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic, thank you so much guys. So just looking at a couple of those, like we said, fun, inclusive, social media, organization, community, enlightening, budgeting, engagement, big and small, making money online. COVID-19. <laughs> True, and we're gonna be discussing all of that today. So I'm glad that we're all on the same page. So, what does a typical RAG calendar look like? So have a little think about what events are the typical ones at your RAG host. You can pop them in the chat. Every year there are certain events that a lot of RAGs hold. But like, as, like Laura said, we come from medium to large size RAGs. So it can be different depending on RAGs all across the country. 
So we have tried to categorise these typical events into three groups depending on the size. So we have your smaller events, so your pub quizzes, socials, volunteering opportunities, welcome fair planning, into your medium events, which can be things like puppy rooms, escape rooms, take me out, speed dating, and then your large events, rag awards or your balls, your club nights, your rag week and your colour run. So in terms of small, medium, large, it's more of how many people are attending, how much work needs to go into them, um, what, what you need to do to be ready for them. So things like pub quizzes, you can hold them in your union, you can attract anywhere from, 50, from 10 to 100 people. Um, but then moving on to your rag awards slash ball, people from across the union will come to that, charity partners could come to that, your challenge participants, all of your rag committee, all of your volunteers, things like that. So it really, really does depend. So does your rag host any of these and are any of these jumping out of you with things you might like to do because like I said lots of different rags hold lots of different events and now in the current situation that we are in in the COVID-19 situation you might think well when in the year can these be done thinking about later in the year the summer term when that is looking like when we are be able to hold events or can you move any events online because a lot of unions at the moment have been so creative in putting things online just like the student opportunities festival so there's a wealth of things you could do online in terms of moving your events online, there are a couple of things that you need to consider. So the scale of the event will obviously depend what the event is. So going back, you could think about a pub quiz being put online, you could put your escape rooms online, or you could even do your rag awards online. So it obviously all depends then on who needs to be involved in organising it, how you're going to facilitate it and things like that. What kind of platforms can you use? So you can use Zoom, you could use Facebook Live, you could use webinar, you could stream on YouTube. Um, and it, again, it all depends on how many people you're gonna have involved. If you've got 50 people like we have now, you're going to be streaming more than you are having 50 people chatting to each other. But if you have a smaller event, such as just with your volunteers or just with your rag committee, it's going to be, um, a lot smaller, a lot more comfortable, and you're all going to want to be able to chat to each other. So moving on to that with your audience, so it depends who your um, event is, is aimed at. So like I said, if it is with your RAG committee, just, just the 10, 15 of you, you're going to want it small, on Zoom, being able to chat to each other. But when we host things like this, we want it on a webinar, we want it to be accessible to lots and lots of people. And then finally, you want to think about why are we holding this event? Now, in the world of COVID-19, there might be several reasons. You might be trying to fundraise for NHS charities or the charities that you already fundraise for within your rag. Or you might want to just be a friendly face online and host a quiz or host a yoga session just to keep your volunteers engaged and make sure that people in your union know that you are trying to do things for them during this time. So you want to think, am I raising money? Am I being, um, am, am I raising money? Am I just trying to be a friendly face? What am I trying to do? So these are the key things that we think you should think about when moving your event online. Thinking about the future. <laughs> so all we can say right now is that we do not know what the future is going to look like. Uh, we can make assumptions that a lot of your lectures will be online. So does that mean you won't be able to put on events? Um, like you would normally. Um, so obviously the things we're gonna talk through now is obviously what you can do moving forward with this uncertainty. So this is the perfect opportunity to really think ahead. Um, now that you have the whole summer, you have technically summer first term, we have a bit more time and resource, um, and you can really think outside of the box. So going back to that typical rag calendar that Meg mentioned, um, I would recommend that first of all, you would look at your own calendar. So whether you sit down with your committee over a call um, over the summer and you look at the events, uh, the socials, everything you normally do and think, what do we want to achieve this year? Why are we doing what we're doing? Um, and pick the ones you do want to move forward with. Then you can look at obviously when you'll run those events. What can you move online? What has to be in person? And what technically could you plan and leave till later in the year? 
So looking at time and resource, I think this is something that a lot of us as volunteers, we do overlook. We forget we have our studies as well and we offer too much time. Um, but we have the summer, great. So over the summer, you'd normally plan your welcome fair, so your freshers fair, you'd look at your first social um, and you'd also look at the first event, so on. Um, so thinking realistically about your committee, all the positions you have, are there positions over summer for things you would normally be, be planning that those positions could take on something else? So do you have a raids officer that you may not be able to set up raids for first term, they can throw in resource and time somewhere else? So as a committee over summer, you should really look at the upcoming year. So we're gonna look at this as online, in person and later in the year. So maybe if you have the time and resources, so maybe, maybe you could plan two alternatives. You could plan that you know, you're lucky and you get to have in person or you have to put it online. So if you had the time, obviously this is brilliant because if you then can't have a first term, you can have a second term or you have the backup that you can do online. The other option, which I think if you do have the time now and especially first term, it'd be very good to use this spare time. I use very loosely um, to plan now but for later. So if Meg, you can move on to the next slide for me. Thank you. So this is something I planned when I was coming to the end of my time as RAG Vice President. Uh, we didn't get to do our colour run, um, the annual colour run last year. So I was planning um, the basic kind of um, set up for the next committee. So is this something that you could do that over summer you sit down with your committee and work out, you know, the bigger events, if you could put them um, on campus, outside of campus, but not online, how would you make that happen? So what I did was, you know, I wanted to do the colour run. So I sat down and thought, who are my stakeholders? So my first stakeholder would be the sports department. What could they offer that I don't have? They could offer, you know, the cyclists to lead the team, the route and so on. Um, and also the union. Don't forget the union are there to support you. Um, also with the sabbatical officers, they are there to support you. And at the end of the day, they want to promote and help you because it really, really does reflect well on a union if you're the ones raising the money. Um, and it's something they can, you know, pat on the back. Um, and then other things to consider. So as you can see on the right, there's a Colour Run logo and a t-shirt that I considered. So I had someone design the logos and everything in advance. I then contacted these um, companies to see if you know they can offer um, on bulk t-shirts. Uh, so then when we were planning how much the Colour Run would cost for people, we can keep the cost down if we buy a maximum number of t-shirts. Um, and then you can also plan things like Facebook banners. So the day you, you know, you can get back on campus and do these bigger events, you can go, we are ready. We just need to order this. We need to put it online, done. Um, could you then think about sponsorship? A lot of rags at the moment won't think about sponsorship because you're not thinking about those bigger events you're doing because you don't know when they're going to take place. But could you get in contact with um, larger companies? Maybe, maybe it'd even be the company that you're going through to get the t-shirts. Um, Remember that sponsorship is still something that companies will want, especially post COVID, because they'll need that kind of interaction with like student members again. Also things consider, pre-plan your ad hoc forms, your risk assessments. These are boring documents. Once they are done, they are done. And then all you have to do is change your date on it. And then, like I said before, contact the union, the SAB, so on to plan your promo. So other events we can kind of consider as well. Obviously I've, I've, reflected on the colour run just because it's something I did myself but thinking about later in the year most rags have their annual rag ball and um, could you plan two versions of your rag ball could you plan your inside kind of huge you've got the resource event or you, could you plan some sort of outside um, marquee kind of event that will be lower resource lower cost but obviously when you think about these original ideas you normally kind of stick to every year you need to think about the resource, the money, your membership. So obviously the one thing that comes to my mind when you start this conversation about events is normally you get your welcome fair, you get your freshers fair, you can get up to 100 members. That's what we were looking at at Kent Rag every year, about 100 members at five pound each. Obviously that will change across every single rag. But if they're 100 members, you normally get every year a welcome fair, you don't get any more. Where is your money coming from? Are you getting money from the unions to put these events on? Or are you having to get this money through membership? If so, obviously this really does depend on your recruitment and maybe you need to adapt. So some of my ideas for adapting are around 
sorry, the chat's really distracted, <laughs> um, are around, obviously, again, the colour run. Could you look at the other events that go on on campus with other societies? So one that comes to mind is Holly. So instead of putting your resource, your minimal resource, your minimal money, etc., minimal time into a colour run that could be a smaller scale, could you support societies in their events, i.e. Holly, where you could help them with putting extra money, extra resource into it, extra marketing, and in um, as a result, you'll get more people turning up, more money raised, so on. The other one is Rag Ball. So if you can't afford to have your um, typical big Just Rag members ball, what about reaching out to smaller societies, maybe the other charity societies you have on campus, and have the chance to um, have a charity ball? Be, you know, this is a perfect opportunity to collab. And I think our union especially found it hard to collab societies, but this is the perfect moment to do so. Just unmute myself. So, okay, we'll move on. A perfect world. So what is a perfect world? When we're talking now about a perfect world, we envision going back to university in September as if nothing has e even happened, like you've never even left your rag and it, you're back ready to plan events. So this is our perfect world calendar for a rag. Again, this is based on our experiences at a medium to large rag. Um, some of these events we wouldn't have run, some of these events, there'll be events in there that we ha will have run and not, but it really does differ from rag to rag. So the generic uni calendar would start in September with your welcome week planning and your new member socials. The welcome week planning will consist of how are you going to recruit new members? Do you have a welcome fair? Are you going to run an event in Welcome Week um, to engage the new students and get them involved in RAG first of all? Once you've got them involved, um, your new member socials, this is a really good way to meet your new members. And this is where, like I was saying earlier, you need to think about diversifying your events. Um, some of your um, new members will be first years, will have just come to university, they may not be involved in drinking culture, some may be involved in drinking culture, so you need events that are going, and socials, that are really going to be able to attract all of your members, because you don't want to be running a club night every single week for social, and there's 20 of your members who, that is, that's not what they want to do. Moving on to October, this is the key time for challenge recruitment. So it's going to be a really, really busy time on campus. You're going to have all your challenge providers coming up. You're going to have your charities coming up. Um, when I was at Carnival, we would run three or four big challenges in the year. And this is when our challenge recruitment would come. So um, it would be about um, holding talks, doing lecture shout outs, um, all promotion on campus. At the end of October, obviously, you have Halloween. Um, events like that throughout the year halloween easter christmas and they're really really good times to hold events hold socials um and they can be really diverse depending on what you want to do moving into november obviously you have november which is so popular across the country it's not specific to rag um you can get so many people involved with this and um, you can have a leaderboard of clubs across your uni so the sports teams will always get involved you can have other societies getting involved make it a bit of a competition um people always used to go mad for it especially rugby boys for some reason they love growing a mustache for that month um so yeah enigma also um i've been reading the chat and a couple of events we've been saying people are quite unsure what they are but enigma is um a social you get on a bus at your university and you go off to another city for a night out basically but you have no idea where you're going uh, when I was at Nottingham in my second year when I was a rep for Carnival um, we went to Leeds Prism, take from that what you will, um, it was a, an interesting night, um, it was really really fun though, fancy dress, obviously you don't know where you are until you get off the bus. December, like I said, Christmas, um, absolutely ideal to run events, um, Christmas grotto, think your Christmas rag dinner, your Christmas socials um, and it's just a nice way to finish before you go off to your break. Now, coming back in January, obviously, you're really, really excited to get back to uni, get back to your friends, but exam season is upon us.
but wellbeing events are so popular then. Going back to puppy room, which I said earlier, um, that's really good. Things like yoga, any mindfulness activities, um, they're really, really good for helping people in exam season. Just to know puppy room, a couple of people have asked, what is puppy room? Um, we worked with guide dogs at Nottingham and they would come in eight or nine guide dogs um, in training with their handlers and volunteers and we'd have a puppy room it'd be two pounds to enter and people would have half hour with the dogs be able to walk around and ask questions they'd be able to stroke the dogs and it's just a really really nice day it really is i loved it also in january you have welcome back socials recruiting new members and dry january laura you've you've done dry january haven't you last three years See, we have a very brave person with us today. Last three years, dry January. And like I said, that's another thing. Similar to November, you can get people across the union involved in that, not just people involved in RAG. Moving on to February, RAG Week and Valentine's events. Um, RAG Week is obviously a massive, massive event and not all RAGs run them. Um, I ran our first one two years ago in Nottingham, even though we are such a large RAG. Um, it, it, the amount of planning and things that goes into it um, it really is a big 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 week but it's so worth it so rag week I was consisted of valentine's theme so we did a puppy room we did a valentine's quiz we did speed dating and we ended the week with a take me out so it's, it's only four events but it was so so worth it and you've got you, we raised 1500 pounds I think in that in those days um, so you've got an amazing amount of money then to go with your charities Moving on to March and April, obviously they're quieter months in the uni, you're gearing up again for exam season, but there's obviously things that you can do, you can do volunteering opportunities, uh, this is a lot of the mega raids are going on, mega raids are organised by some of the larger charities, so you've got um, Breast Cancer Now is a really, really popular one, Meningitis Research host one, Actually Against Hunger host one, and you go down to London, you go to a tube station with your bucket and you're decked out in fancy dress and you collect for the whole day. It's one of the longest days of your life, but it's actually so such a good day, isn't it, Laura? It's so fun. Honestly, you're saying one day and I'm shivering because I knew that I was sitting in a ridiculously not warm costume for two days. <laughs> Freezing, but it was worth it, honestly. You can so raise much so money. much money, so, so much good. money in such a short amount of time. Carnival Rag actually hold the record for the most amount of money raised in one day at a mega raid. It was in Poppy Appeal in 2016. £16,000. All right. I wish I knew our number to challenge you, but I'll let you have that. <laughs> well, we hold the record, so sorry, Laura. But again, exam prep, wellbeing events. Again in May, wellbeing events um, and your committee elections. And then you're moving on to June, July and August, which is the end of your year. Um, maybe you're moving on to um, another year in committee. Maybe it's your final year. But this is when you will be holding your RAG ball slash awards. You're planning for next year and RAG conference, which will hopefully be in person next year. But it really is a staple of the RAG calendar. It's such a good opportunity to meet other people. And we've been really, really lucky to be able to continue doing it online this year. So finally, after your perfect world, oh, also, back to a perfect world, sorry, my bad. With this calendar, Warwick Rag is running a session at five o'clock about planning for a successful year, which kind of links back into this and what kind of events you can run. So I would really recommend if you're um, maybe a president or event coordinator, I would really recommend that session. So finally, now we have to talk through the perhaps boring but absolutely necessary aspects of planning an event. So first of all, who is involved in your event? You need to consider all your stakeholders, internal and external. So these could include your committee members, your RAG volunteers, your finance director, your member of staff in the union, um, and externally, it could be your charity partners, your challenge partners, um, security, food vendors. It really depends what event you're going to be doing. Um, if it's your committee that you're talking about, it's going to be, right, what are you going to be in charge of? Are you going to be in charge of the music? Are you going to be in charge of writing the quiz, depending on the event you're doing? Um, 
and then working out do we need extra volunteers and who exactly is going to be involved. And then risk assessment, I mentioned them earlier, they were great fun. So I've never in my time in RAG known anyone to happily do a risk assessment. Every time someone does do, then do one, they've always said actually how simple it is. Uh, so I do recommend just kind of getting over that first hurdle. Um, your risk assessment, um, so in my union we also had an ad hoc form. Um, so do check with your union what um, means you have to use, but the basic is the risk assessment. This is, you know, just to ensure that you're assessing every risk, as it says in the name. So one example would be, again, the colour run. I remember three years back, the first um, colour run I went to, they told me in the risk assessment they had to write that people might trip over their shoelaces. <laughs> and to avoid that, they should check if one um, does up their shoelaces. And I was like, okay. But it is simple things like that. You know, if you hold a glitter stand, you make sure you put signs up that people may be allergic to Vaseline or whatever means you're using. So it's basically just sitting down and looking at each part, you know, people aren't, um, you know, the people are prepared basically. Um, but like I've said, it's not as boring as it seems. Um, and every time we had a different event or social, so it should be done for events, socials, so on. Um, I'd allocate that to a role. So if it's an event, you should allow the event coordinator or whatever role holds that, or if it's a social, just to give everyone kind of the chance to do a risk assessment. And then promotion. This is my favorite part. Um, so my role on NASA is actually social media and stuff. Uh, so I do enjoy this side of it all. Um, but also I think it's very important because both in my role as vice president, but also in my role as vice president of RAG, you find that this is the, this is the thing that really, you know, tells you whether the um, event's going to go well, if it's going to be a small event, a big event. Um, so it all starts with platforms used. So, you know, are you using just Facebook? Because not everyone has Facebook. Are you using inclusive language? So, you know, I put Boozy on the mentee earlier. You know, that kind of language may not be for everyone, not everyone's a first year, so on. But also, did you know, you know, I'm a postgraduate representative, postgrads hate the word fresher. So it's just kind of being aware of before you do posts on social media that you're kind of aware of the different words that could trigger cert certain groups of people to not come to your event. Uh, so instead of fresher, you could say welcome event. Um, so on, but also when you go on different platforms, be aware that it also has a different um, audience. So Facebook used to be a bit of fun. Um, emails could be quite a bit more serious and formal. So on LinkedIn, Twitter, a lot of people use them for different reasons. And maybe be aware of your audience when you do this. Um, so definitely use multiple platforms. But I think also you need to really um, take into consideration posting at relevant times. So I think if you look at your own Instagram and Facebook, I think you'll always be aware of when you get more likes than you usually would. Um, so I was saying earlier, like you, you can post at 6 p.m. and you'll get hundreds of likes and you're like, wow. But you might post at 12 o'clock during the day. And you'll be like, that is a huge difference between 20 likes and 100 odd likes. But these are things you need to look at when you're promoting your event. So, you know, could you look at the algorithm? There's a couple of websites you can go on and it will tell you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, so on, the best times for you to post. But I would say that this may have changed due to COVID. Um, a lot of people are on social media at very different times. I know that I'm on during the day when I normally wouldn't be. Um, but yeah, and then moving on, sorry. Um, have you collaborated with other societies? So there are, are there certain events that other societies may have an interest in? So Movember, like Meg mentioned earlier, rugby boys, they love it. Same as I think hockey. I think anything that people can kind of compete. So at our union, rugby raise the most every year. Um, and it is that kind of pride thing. So how can you in a way encapsulate other societies to want to be involved or share your um, fundraising target to share in your event? Um, so it's definitely looking to, you know, you could do the poppy appeal throughout the year. You can do various things and look at what other societies could help you. Have you asked your union to share? Like I said before, your union want you to raise loads of money. It looks good. They share it on their financial records at the end of the year. Like, it looks good. <laughs> so ask them to share your event. Ask them to share your fundraising page, so on. Emails. I was secretary for RAG at one point, and I found this my favorite part of the role because you could send a weekly email, and you knew it was going to be formal, but you could also share, like, your event and then after the event you could share this the successes of your event you could share how much you raised you can share the photos and it could be such a great way to engage those people that may not be engaged in your facebook or maybe you can put things in your emails that you wouldn't be able to put 
so formally on Facebook or Instagram. And then finally, something else we did in our RAG was, and I think Meg will even agree in her RAG has been the case, where committee have to share everything. <laughs> when you join committee, you allow your Facebook to be taken over by it. And I think if you become a member of um, any challenge as well, your whole Facebook becomes, you know, I'm climbing Kilimanjaro, I'm doing a skydive. You need to accept it. And whoever is on your committee needs to accept it because it's the best way. Because for every share you get, that's an additional three people or so that will um, go onto your event and maybe put interest in so they don't lose where it is. Um, also, we made um, each person, I say made because we did chase people up, um, each person by the next committee meeting had to invite at least 10, 20 people. Um, and the funny thing is, it got to a point where we were all inviting the same people. Nope, you had to go through it. Everyone had to invite completely different people. And I think this became especially good um, and effective when I was then a postgrad and I can invent, um, invite some new postgrad people who may not have been engaged with RAG before. Other people are first years, second years, and you start to then really build a strong RAG community. Yeah, definitely. And just building really quickly on what Laura said, committee, you have to get them to share everything. We used to change our profile pictures and not them. So it'd be like, right, we've got this event coming up on the 3rd of, 3rd of March. So on the 1st of February, we're all going to change our profile pictures at this time at all at once. And then you'd go on Facebook at six o'clock and you'd scroll through your, free, your feed and it would just be like, take me out, take me out, take me out, take me out, take me out. And you'd be like, wow, I can't hold an event. <laughs> so yeah um the final thing we're going to talk about now is costs so what is your budget for your event and um, this really really differs event to event so if you're holding one of the smaller events like we spoke about earlier a pub quiz this can be really really low cost really really low risk you can hold it in your union bar or in your local pub um, a lot of pubs and student areas are more than willing to um, help you out and let you host a quiz there and union bars um, always always will say yes um, you, they won't cost you anything to hire and you can even then ask local businesses to donate prices so you're not out of pocket for that but in your bigger events such as your rag awards your rag ball you're going to be asking people to pay to come in so you're going to be asking people to pay 30 35 pounds for the three course meal the wine um, the entertainment and then often you probably won't make a profit, you probably just break even, but that's what you want to do because it's for your rag, it's not um, for a charity event or anything like that. But it really, really, really does differ depending on what you are going to be doing. So you need to sit down with your treasurer and work out what can you afford to spend. Um, if you're spending anything, make sure you're expensing it back. Um, speaking to your finance director at the union if you have one um, and just being just being really really sensible and thinking oh, I really want to hold this event but maybe you don't have the, the money to hold it you could hold a smaller version or maybe you can be like right I really want to hold this event but maybe I can't do it this year maybe we'll do it next year and you'll fundraise through the year to be able to hold that event next year um, so it really really is like long-term planning and um, just really be insensible. So thank you so much for coming to our session. Um, like I said, we're going to carry on the conversation in the coffee shop, table two, and we're going to chat on social media, but we're happy now to take any questions um, if anyone has any. So we've had a few questions come in through the Q&A function uh, already, but if anyone else has got any more, please, please do send them. Um, the first one that we've had come in comes from Emma Davies. Um, and she asked, do you think it's better to hold lots of smaller events or a couple of larger events in the year? Shut up. <laughs> I suppose it's going to be different for everyone who responds, isn't it? Like, I would say that the smaller events or even like maybe not events, but the social, the first few things you do when you start are the way you gauge those new members and really make them feel welcome. So I feel like it's more intimidating to go to a rag ball having never been any other rag event or social but maybe go into like the first escape room you do or something like that will make you feel more of a member so I, I think it really does depend and also depends on what you're comfortable putting on because a few smaller events may take less time and resource for you to plan than maybe a bigger event but like I said you could take that time to plan one big event and it'd be the biggest thing if you collab with other people um, so again I think it really does depend 
Fantastic. The other question that we've had come in um, was from Caroline. Um, and she mentioned a virtual escape room, which Rosie's kindly answered in the chat, but she also asked if you could say a little bit more about jailbreaks, whether you have any experience of organising them. I actually didn't do a jailbreak or nothing, so I'm going to hand oh. it back to Laura. Miss <laughs> me again. So we're lucky enough to have our um, RAG coordinator, who always did like the back end planning, so she sorted out the trackers. I suppose it depends what people need to know about jailbreaks. But obviously, for anyone who doesn't know, sorry, this is basically you start on your campus at a certain time in the morning. So I think we start at like 6 a.m. and you could leave with no money but your things um, and you had to travel as far as you could with no money. So obviously, along the way, people would get people to pay for your train tickets, your plane tickets. Our group last year got to, or two years ago, got to San Francisco, um, which was, I think, the furthest we've ever got um, in our rag. But yeah, the, the kind of stuff that people are worried about are the trackers. Uh, so we had an online tracking system. So I think each person who signed up paid something like 10 or 15 pounds. And that paid for a basic like travel toothpaste, travel um, toothbrush, um, uh, cheap phone or something like it was a lot of little stuff that we didn't want them to take themselves or pay for themselves and then a tracker just so they could literally send a code in um, and it'll tell us where they are but they have to do it every hour for safety reasons um, but I think there's a lot of questions about jail, jailbreak at the moment just because of um, the b word you know the brexit um, <laughs> I think people don't really know how that's going to work in practice so I definitely say planning for a jailbreak is brilliant I think it's the most engaging thing we had in our rag that got people from other societies wanting to be involved. And I think for fundraising, when you're doing a challenge, it's a brilliant way to raise for your challenge through a different means. Um, I definitely talk to your union or your coordinator about how they would work with Brexit. Fantastic. I had another question come in uh, from Ella, and I think you uh, will both be able to um, help on this one. So Ella has said, as a president who has to oversee everything, do you have any advice to keep the workload down when planning the year? So um, as director of Carnival, Carnival is a really, really big rag and taking on that role for the year um, in my final year um, was a bit daunting. But um, as many other RAG committee members will tell you, and I'm sure you know yourself, um, RAG does a little bit take over your life at uni, um, but really, really use your committee. That's what they're there for. Um, they signed up to the roles as well. They know what they're meant to be doing and don't try and do everything yourself your role as as president or director or chair is to oversee the committee it's not to do every single bit of it's not to do everyone's roles it's to make sure people know what they're doing make sure people are um get, staying involved so really don't try and do everything yourself it's what your committee are there for so really really use them i'd love to get advice from the vice president side as well our president was president for two years but was on committee the same amount of time as me and she felt the need to do everything and it, it, it became way too much for her when she was doing her degree as well and as vice president we had to really sit down and work out what the best way moving forward with the committee was um, and we actually found portal calls were really good so the president would take the portal calls of her area of expertise which was raids and um, the treasurer um, mine as vice president was the challenges and events um, and then the secretary would get a couple of people as well. And this just meant this wasn't from the well-being side. This was more about workload and just checking in that we're not taking on too much. So I would check on the events team and say, like, can you take on three events a term? Can you seriously do that with your degree? Um, and will you get that to all your other committees? Because I think people forget the other roles that need to be involved as well. So if you're planning an event and you're telling committee a week before it happens, You've then got a marketing officer that's got to get everything done. Maybe potentially a media officer that's got to get that all in line. Maybe your secretary has got to email it. So it's that kind of planning as everyone, how you can do that. And I think the president needs to be able to, in a way, um, step back and see what everyone else's roles are as well. I don't know if that helps from a uh, VP, like, I was about to say postcard side then, <laughs> but a VP perspective. <laughs> I think that's really good. I guess just to explain this question, if you two had one tip each for kind of putting into place the things you've just mentioned, what would they be? We did what, sorry? So if you, for, for the things you just mentioned, so in terms of like delegating and um, kind of assigning committee members, have you both got kind of a, a practical tip that you use to be able to do that? Kind of manage your own time? Um, putting you on the spot here. 
obviously you're going to become really really close to your committee we are a group chat um if i if i needed or wanted something to be done or probably in the group chat we were really really fortunate to have an office as well um so getting them into the office um if you are in the middle of planning a really really big event be like right guys we all need to be in the office at this time so we can all coordinate with each other so then you're not sat in the office or sat at home in your room and you're looking at your laptop you can't get in touch with all your committee members at once um so that that's a good thing for me like get your committee together um try and meet once a week and this will really like keep people on task yeah so similar um we had very clear expectations so we had committee meeting every single monday to allow us to review the last week and think about the future week um, and then our secretary did the kind of minutes and the very clear actions everyone had to by the next committee meeting meet those actions but I think the rest, the other stuff that kind of comes with your committee that people don't recognise is probably the promo hours, the extra hours that come in on top of other things. So when you've got six challenges, say, you've got to promote a week per challenge. How are you going to fit all that time in? So what we, we would do was check when everyone kind of had seminars, lectures, a good time to be able to do their own work in their own time. And then maybe an hour or two, a day or every other day. To kind of give time to promoting rag obviously i'm saying this for very very dedicated rag committee in a sense of like we probably all put way too much in but it was the only way we could kind of share that kind of pressure across everyone so if every single person did one hour even a week that takes maybe 14 hours away from the president doing all 15 hours of promo so i think yeah just clear expectations from the start saying you know you have to be at the committee meetings you have to be involved in promo you have to be involved in tracking for jailbreak you have to be there for the rag week events and i think if you clear like clearly set them out at the start it's not so harsh on people when later on you're telling them off because they haven't been anywhere <laughs> i'm sorry to put you both on the spot there but i think that's really useful <laughs> for everyone as well um we've had one other question that's been sent through directly so um someone's asked what sort of online events do you think are going to be the best fundraisers in the first term I think online quizzes are really, really easy to facilitate and organise. Um, so they're really, really good. Um, you can get people to donate to like a Just Giving page or um, you can get, there's lots and lots of different platforms online that you can use. Um, like Rosie said earlier, there's the um, online escape room happening tonight. So if you want to go along and see how it's being done, then I think that's a really, really good event to put online. And it's something that people would genuinely pay to join in with as well because it's, it's such a big um, event that you're putting online. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, quizzes, we've do all done them all since lockdown and I think students coming in in first term, if they're stuck online for most of it, then yeah, they probably are really easy to kind of get people engaged. But I would say this is the perfect opportunity to think outside of the box and not worry if you set something up and it fails. Because at the end of the day, if it fails right now, it's better it fail while we're online than, you know, putting all the resource in person. So I don't know. I've been talking to my union about what September could look like for us. Could you do some sort of like online um, Wednesday night out for, first, for the first week? I was an avid, our night out was Wednesday on a Wednesday and I was an avid goer. Um, and it's saying like, how can you give these people these still socials and events? Obviously, I'm talking from you know the party side but you can also put other things on like bingo nights why not um but think outside of the box could you you know generally one who's gonna like dj in or you know make a playlist you can all share and you can all get on like a zoom call and everyone pays like a couple pounds um stuff like that also fundraising a lot of people at the minute i've seen online are doing care packages and i think a lot of people who work in the nhs and friends of people who work in the nhs so on are paying five ten pounds for like a goodie bag pretty much being made and sent to friends and family um obviously because we can't see each other i think again think outside of the box think how you can raise money a lot of people online have been making fudge and um, be making um they like bonbons i think they're called or something um but making loads of money for charity all from something they enjoy doing uh, but I think just to add on to Laura's point there, uh, it's pointed out that there's also a session being run on Saturday at 3pm called 101 Online Event Ideas. So if anyone looks for some, wants some more inspiration, um, then definitely check that out at 3pm on Saturday uh, as well. I was going to say, they probably have the answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, they are all the questions we've had come through. If anyone's got anything um, they want to send in last minute, then speak now or forever hold your peace. 
but uh, alternatively, um, if anybody does want to carry on the conversation, um, we'll be in the, the coffee shop uh, on table two. So you can head over there to have a chat to, to Meg and Laura and also to everyone else in the session um, if you want to discuss any ideas that have been brought up. As I said, the session has been recorded. So um, NASPA will be sharing this uh, in the weeks after the conference. So um, you'll be able to take a look back at this and all the other sessions throughout the week as well. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. Um, and we hope you enjoy the session and the rest of the conference. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.